The progress being made on multiple starships in South Texas is today's first topic of conversation. Then we'll debrief this week's Starlink launch, talk SpaceX funding, litigation, and the future, then finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin. Hey, Meyer, and this is SpaceX in the News. We'll go in numerical order and start things off with Starship 6. On Sunday, SpaceX engineers in Boca Chica performed a cryo test on SN6, filling its locks and methane tanks with super chilled liquid, probably nitrogen, as an integrity check. It all must have went well because soon after, the hydraulic rams in place under the vessel to simulate engine thrust were removed and replaced with a single Raptor engine. On Tuesday, Raptor serial number 29 was transported down Highway 4 toward the launch site and installed the following day. At the moment, a static fire of the vehicle is scheduled for Sunday. Elon informed the community on Twitter that Raptor has reached a record-setting chamber pressure of 330 bar without exploding. Oh, no. This beats the 300 bar record held by the Soviet Union's RD-701 engine, built in the 80s, but never flown. Raptor SN40 is about to be tested in McGregor, Texas, and has several upgrades over the engine that hit 330 bar. And just for reference, 330 bar on Raptor produces about 225 tons of force, which in case you are curious, is equal to a stack of 45 magical fire farting elephants sitting on your head at the same time. You're welcome for that. And speaking of heat, Texas is hot. Elon has been in Boca Chica all week enjoying the humidity by lying to himself, thinking that really he's at a tropical resort. Awesome. I don't think I've ever been this covered in sweat before. But SpaceX will have a resort down there eventually. It will be for employees unless safety and security allows for public access. Of course, public support is critical to making life multiplanetary, which is why we are all here doing what we do. Well, that and because self-landing rockets are awesome. But if one day we do colonize Mars, the question remains, what kind of government would be put into place? Well, if Elon had it his way, he would choose a direct democracy, I guess that beats communism, but still not good enough, I'm afraid. The reason why the US is a republic and not a direct democracy is because the founders recognized the shortcomings of popular rule, or mob rule, in ancient Greece in contrast to the republicanism of Sparta and Rome, believing that the beliefs, rights, and contributions of the minority among us shouldn't be discounted, and also recognizing that democracy is vulnerable to tyranny. This is Sparta! But anyway, that's enough history for Meow. If you're interested, you can learn more by reading Dr. Dobsky's Heritage Foundation article. There's a link in the description below. <laughs> if all goes according to plan, SN8 will be the first Starship prototype to have three Raptor engines and fly to 20 clicks. I say clicks to annoy everybody who took size in the kilometer kilometer debate. SN8 is currently undergoing stacking in the mid bay. The skirt and the engine section have been mated as well as much of the main body. We should expect to see our first fully completed operational Starship with fins and all in just a matter of weeks. When it flies, it will be hard to spot with the naked eye at such a high altitude, despite her big reflective body. But SpaceX will do lots of flights. So I guess they won't be using a sea platform for those. Instead, they'll just bring it over the coast during the descent and aim for the pad if all systems are nominal. But SN8 is no longer where our list of Starships ends. SN9 is now under construction. Its common dome bulkhead that separates methane from liquid oxygen has been spotted outside the tents and has since been sleeved with rings of 304L stainless steel. Also, part of the 7.1 proto tank has been moved onto a test stand. Soon we could be discussing serial numbers for super heavy boosters because teams are about finished constructing the high bay in which those boosters will be built. And just for fun, Zeus the Robo Dog was spotted this week by local photographer and YouTuber John Randolph going for a walk with its handlers. Haven't seen him for a while, which is a good thing, because when we do see him doing his job, it means something isn't normal with Starship. Now let's move on and debrief this week's 11th Starlink launch. On Tuesday morning, SpaceX successfully placed three Earth imaging satellites for planets and 58 Starlink sats into orbit, which put the total tally around 650 for the constellation. But what was especially notable about this mission was the fact that this booster was the first to fly for a sixth time. And yes, first to land for a sixth time as well. It returned to port this morning, and its picture was taken by local photographer Greg Scott. One of the used fairings was also caught by Mystery. SpaceX shared the epic footage with us later that day. Mmm, parachutes. Those shoots are controlled autonomously by the fairings, as are the boats via SpaceX autopilot. 
They communicate with one another via GPS and sounds like they are narrowing their strategery down. Maybe borrowing some OpenAI software, I don't know. But that's the third catch within a month. The other fairing that missed the net was fished out of the water by mischief. Payload reduction due to reusability of the booster and fairing is less than 40% for Falcon 9 and recovery and refurbishment is less than 10%, which means cost benefits are roughly even after two flights, definitely saving money with three. These boosters are designed to be flown 10 times and they will be with Starlink missions, but more than 100 flights are possible with some replaced or upgraded parts. Cleaning all nine Merlin turbines is difficult. Raptor, however, is way easier in this regard, despite being a far more complex engine. Starlink is currently in its closed beta phase of testing, and even though it's supposed to be hush-hush, testers are leaking their results anonymously on Reddit. Here's several screenshots of speed tests put together by Reddit user Snacks. But more results than this were found, and it was reported that participants were getting download speeds of 11 to 60 megabits per second which is below the average of 96 here in the States, but keep in mind the constellation is in its youth and this is the reason why private betas exist. Latency speed tests have reported to be as low as 20 milliseconds, which is in the competitive gaming territory that Elon teased months back. Starlink was just one avenue SpaceX went down to fund its mission to colonize Mars via Starship. They are still pulling in money from investors. And after the success of Crew Dragon and Demo 2, those investors aren't exactly being stingy. Just as I was uploading last week's video, Bloomberg reported that SpaceX is close to closing their current round with $2 billion in new funding. Originally, SpaceX was only looking to raise $1 billion at $270 a share, but so much for aiming low. It is the largest funding SpaceX has had so far, by far. And when the transaction is finalized, the company will have an equity value of $46 billion. Hey meow, don't be hatin' or aintin', what's good for SpaceX is good for all of us. So onward we go. Despite winning the lesser half of the recent National Security Space Launch Phase 2 contracts that we spoke about in last week's episode, SpaceX is pressing on with their lawsuit against the U.S. Air Force. In 2018, the military branch didn't award SpaceX any money to help pay for launch vehicle and infrastructure development, which would have been used to determine if more money could be awarded during the recent Phase 2 contracts. Instead, they awarded contracts to ULA, Northrop Grumman, and Blue Origin. ULA then went on to win the greater launch contract of Phase 2 just the other week, and SpaceX, despite not receiving any money from the initial LSA decision, won the lesser share of Phase 2. Obviously, despite winning LSA contracts, Northrop Grumman and Blue Origin were cut off after losing Phase 2 bids. But because SpaceX didn't receive any funding from the first round of contracts, they claimed in an August 19th filing with the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California that their recent win doesn't change the fact that irreparable harm was caused to the company and thus ULA was given an unfair advantage at winning the greater share of Phase 2. Got it? SpaceX is asking the court to rule the initial LSA award improper, putting an end to the $967 million six-year agreement between the Air Force and ULA. The two released a joint statement claiming that SpaceX's argument is unreasonable because they originally sought funding for BFR development, which was Starship before it was called Starship, and was awarded 40% of the Phase 2 contracts because they instead proposed Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy funding. I can only hope that in their document to the court, SpaceX pointed out that Starship funding was rejected, but is still the only rocket of the original four to fly to date. Who knows how far along SpaceX would be if they were given a billion dollars to develop it in 2018. The lawyer wife will make a return on next week's episode to discuss her more valuable thoughts and superior opinion on the matter. But moving on now to future launches. Crew-1 is the next Crew Dragon mission to the ISS, and it now has an official date of October 23rd. Their Dragon capsule arrived at the Cape on Tuesday. But the next SpaceX launch is Satwakam 1B, slated for liftoff on August 27th at 7 in the evening local time. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. Back in April, NASA awarded contracts to three teams of engineers to develop a human landing system for the Artemis program. SpaceX was one winner, a Dynetics-led team was another, and a Blue Origin-led team was a third. Well, yesterday, the Blue Origin-led national team developing their version of a crewed moon lander released a video featuring the two-scale mock-up they handed over to NASA for review. With both the descent and ascent elements, it stands at 12 meters high, and now NASA engineers and astronauts will study the layout and give recommendations on how to proceed with its development. This national team also includes Northrop Grumman and Draper, 
working on the transfer element and avionics respectively. Lockheed Martin is building the ascent element and Blue Origin is constructing the descent element and is currently testing out its BE-7 engine for the descent stage and working on cryogenetic propellant storage technology. The current contracts for all teams are about halfway expired. NASA will release the requirements for the next phase in a few weeks and begin accepting proposals in late fall, choosing their winners in the early spring. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. These news videos are made possible by the generous contributions of my eccentric members and patrons. If you're a longtime viewer, please consider supporting the channel using the Patreon or YouTube links in the description below. Members receive access to more weekly content. And of course, while you're down there, be sure to support local SpaceX photographers. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.